Hi guys, welcome to Monocure 3D Pro Tips. My name is Charlie and I'm excited to be unboxing the Creality CR30. It's their print mill. These have been around for a little while. I have heard they are a little bit tricky to set up, but we're gonna let John have a play with it downstairs and he can tell you more about that. All I'm gonna do is unbox it. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. Okay, let's do the unboxing. It doesn't surprise me it's packed well, it's a solid unit. That's the Creality instruction manual. Standard small roll of filament, which is always good to see to test. Some cables for the setup. It's always good to see an Australian plug, especially considering we bought it locally. USB and SD card. Screws, nuts, bolts, put it together. And some press fits there. And a couple of spare brass nozzles. So the press fits will be for the Bowden tube. And before I take that out, I'm just gonna have a quick look here and see, because sometimes they hide things. Now, there you go. You wouldn't want to throw that out. That's going to hold your filament spool. And what else have we got here? Okay, there's another thing in here, the spare Bowden tube. Don't throw that out. That's really handy to have. And that was hidden under a piece of foam. These must be side rails of some sort, and they were just in this top part of this foam here. So I think that's it in regards to being empty. So let's pull this top part out. Now be careful because I'd say it's connected with these cables and we don't want to damage the cable. So I'll try and carefully pull this part out. That's it. So that's come clean now, but it is definitely is connected. So be very careful. I'm just going to hold that there like that while I get the foam insert out. Probably best if I put this back in and then pull these things out together. Now I can see there's a control board there as well. I'm going to carefully place that on top of the unit. Just lift it straight out. Yep. So you can straight away see the belt and the XY axis and the control panel. So this looks like it's going to be a, a fun project for John to put together downstairs. I'm definitely going to leave that up to him. It's an interesting concept, obviously uh, very different from the, the standard FDM which prints flat. This is actually prints on an angle. Uh, the slicer has to be dedicated slicer. Without further ado, let's get it downstairs to John and get him to set it up. I'm really looking forward to seeing how this works. Thanks, Charlie. We've had this unit for a couple of weeks and we've had a lot of joy putting it together and using it and printing some large models. But at the moment with the Bowden system, it's limiting on the number of filaments that I can choose and print with, in particular TPU. That really requires direct drive. So we're gonna upgrade it to direct drive now, take it upstairs and show you how that's done. Okay, we've got the CR30 up on the desk here and we are going to start pulling stuff off. Not a lot though, essentially just the extruder, its Bowden cable, the filament sensor, they're just gonna pop off. So let's start by removing things. Let's get this Bowden cable off and we'll take this clip off, this plate, which holds the cables in place. We'll have another assembly that we'll use instead of that. And now we'll have a look at these parts that we've 3D printed. Now I got these off Thingiverse. There's probably a few uh, variations on, on this, but essentially it's a plate that allows you to put the extruder right there. And it's gonna have a short tube that goes between there and the extruder. And then we've got the assembly that goes on the side here, which allows you to put the filament sensor right in there. So the filament will feed through that sensor and round through to the uh, extruder which will be sitting here. So let's start disassembling the extruder off the side here. Let's first of all take this right off and we'll just disconnect the existing cable. Now one point to make this cable will not be long enough. We've gone out and purchased a 1.5 meter cable that's excessively long, that's fine. So we'll be replacing this cable and we'll show you how to do that in a sec. So let's take the extruder off. Pretty straightforward, you've got T-nuts that are holding it all in place. We're gonna get rid of this plate. We need to take the top of the extruder off. So all the screws that go through that plate to the stepper motor need to come out. So there's those four screws that go around the edge. So once they're out, then the whole assembly will come apart. So there's that. Don't lose any bits, don't lose the spring. Take that apart and there we go. So that plate goes to one side, we're not gonna be using that. So the next thing we're gonna do is use the 3D printed part that looks like this and we're going to put straight onto the stepper motor, making a note that the stepper motor connector is facing upwards. So essentially it's sitting like that with the stepper motor connector facing upwards. Now you could put it off to the side like that, it really doesn't matter. As long as it's not facing straight down like that. 
because there's no room down there. So let's just have it, have it facing straight up. Because the uh, connection between the extruder and the, uh, the hot end is gonna be like that, we need to have that facing down so that we can put our small piece of tube in there, between there and there. So let's do that now. Let's just connect that straight onto there so that it's sandwiched in between, lining up the screws with the holes on the outside of the stepper motor. tension there that's good so the next thing we need to do once we've got the, that assembly set up like that is it needs to sit in here underneath the plate so that that's in alignment with that but we need to cut this um, PTFE tube to the right length so to do that I'm just going to feed it as far as it'll go into the hot end all the way down and then we're going to make a little mark on here so that it comes up to about the base of the where the aluminium stops so probably about there. So now that we've got that, we can slide it in place and we're good. So now we need to get two screws, one there and one there that feed all the way through to the base here. Looking at that, that's probably an M, either an M14 or M16. I think it's an M16 and it's got to come up from the bottom. So let's pop that off put the screw in the bottom there. See how much of that screw comes out. So that's got to be enough thread for it to go into this plate here. Let's put the other screw in from the bottom. Now the instructions on Thingiverse, kind of non-existent to be honest. You generally just have to look at it and work it out for yourself, which is not all that hard to do. And it doesn't matter if the screw should come out a little shy of the surface there, that's fine, they're not gonna be in the way of anything. Rightio, put those in place, that's good. So the next thing we need to do is set up some sort of cable relief, because this is gonna be moving around all the time. It's gonna have uh, another piece of PDFE that's gonna be coming across here. That's where this part comes in. So there's another 3D printed part that looks like that. Now I've gone one step further and 3D printed a tiny little tube that inserts into there. Now the reason I've done that is without that in place, when the filament comes through and out this other side here, it moves around too much. The filament generally has a bend in it and it doesn't line up nicely with the hole at the top of the extruder. So it's pretty important that that lines up. So this plate here will actually screw onto the back here. So we'll do that now. We'll find the right size screw for that. They look like M8s. Let's put those through. But if we have a look at this assembly here, there's two small holes that we're going to be screwing into. These go in there. Now don't over tighten them because you're putting a metal screw into a plastic hole. Just needs to hold that in place. The next thing we're going to do is take this 3D printed part and we're going to place in this case, a PDFE tube insertion guide. We're gonna screw it into the top there. And then this will screw over the top there. So this is what the Bowden tube will be feeding into. And then that then feeds through the extruder, feeding the filament all the way down into the hot end. The next thing we're gonna deal with is the filament runout sensor. We're gonna move that into a new location. So we'll just undo the two T-nuts that hold that plate in place. Just pop that off. Disconnect that and then we'll unscrew the two screws that hold that onto the plate. And then the filament sensor is going to sit inside this housing here. This plate goes on there and that allows it to rotate ever so slightly. So we'll take the two T nuts off this plate here, drop them into this one. And I'm going to use this nut here, which I think is uh, an M5. Let's drop it into there and we're going to screw it into that hole there. I've got to take the bit of support material out of the middle of that. I'm going to attach that onto there. But just make sure that you don't tighten this screw all the way in so that it's bound up and tight. It just needs to have a little bit of give in it. Alright, so we're going to just choose a nice spot up here for it to attach to. Probably halfway up considering the, um, the gantry will move full travel between those two spots there. So let's bung it about there. Tighten down those T-nuts. That'll be sitting in there. By all means, maybe get a bit of um, double-sided tape and kind of wedge it in there so that it doesn't just fall out. Existing PTFE tube that was on the system for the Bowden setup. The printer comes with a spare, which you've already snipped a bit off for the short piece of PTFE here. 
This is going to go into the top here. The other end will be going into here. And that's what's going to be feeding through the filament sensor. So now we're, what we've got to deal with is the stepper motor cable, which on the current system will be too short to feed up to there. So we're going to replace this cable, but to do that, we need to get into the guts of it underneath. So let's flip it over and have a look underneath. We have a bunch of screws that are holding this panel on. We need to take those screws out so that we can pop that panel out. So the first thing you'll notice is that there is a fan connected to a plug here. Make a note of where that plug goes in and pop it out. The cable for the extruder pops into this slot here. You'll see there's an E marked on this here just to show you that that's the extruder. So we're gonna be popping that one out. Make you note that it's a four pin cable, four pin connector. To get it through here, I strongly suggest you take that plate off. You could actually just loosen it off like that to give you enough room to pull it through. All right, so there's a short regular cable and we're gonna replace it with, in our case, a 1.5 meter cable. Now, one end that goes into the stepper motor is actually a six pin, but it only uses four of the cables. Feed it through here. What I might do is use the original ballon. The purpose of this is to remove as much electrical noise that builds up on the cable as it possibly can because that electrical noise can cause stutters in the stepper motor. Uh, I'll feed that around a couple of times. Be careful not to pinch the cable. And that should help remove any possibility of electrical noise. I'll feed that up through there. Making sure not to pinch any of the cables. We can put the um, bottom panel back on. Remembering to reconnect the fan cable back into that slot there. And we're gonna reattach all that. Don't tighten them up fully to start with because you may need to shuffle it around a bit. Then we follow up with tightening up the screws around the edge here. All right, so now we can drop this back down again. We've got the hot end cable, the extruder cable, and the filament feed cable. So the other end of the uh, stepper motor cable goes in here, like so. And we're gonna deal with the cable relief now. Another part of the 3D printed parts that you get off Thingiverse is this here. This is a cable relief. Pop it in there, like so and I'm going to use a small cable tie to hold that in place. And then you can just make your way along adding cable ties to that, just to keep it all together. So we have another strain relief that we put on this end here, and another cable tie. Let's chop off the excess. Don't forget to reconnect the filament sensor, it goes into the side there. Make sure that none of the other cables are in the way, tuck them away, tie them up. There is already a cable relief tie spot right under there where you can tie everything up. But essentially that's the crux of it. So the original design that's on Thingiverse has these little PTFE tube inserts shown on the diagrams feeding into this end here. Unfortunately, the thread that's in there doesn't match the spare units that we had. We had a much bigger diameter, it looks like an M8. It obviously won't fit in there, so I've just fed the PTFE tube in there. Maybe down the track I'll reprint this so that it's got an M8 internal thread that one of these can screw into so that we'll have like a, a locking mechanism on both ends. We're gonna go downstairs and give it a crack and see how well it works. So we've brought the printer downstairs and we've rigged it all up. And I've started off with just using PLA just to make sure the mechanisms that we've got in place are still working fine. I haven't tried PETG yet, I'll do that soon. But the real test is to do flexible filaments. And at the moment, we're actually testing a skin colored flexible filament here and it's actually working. Apart from this small issue that we have on the side of the print here, but that really has a lot to do with the angles the model is at the moment. And it's really difficult to try and get your head around how models should be angled when you've got a print head that's at 45 degrees instead of right over the top. So I'll need to play around with that to get that right, to get the angles just right for the model that we're printing. But so far, so good. It's, it's a nice, clean print on the surfaces. I had to dial in the temperature. When we did our first print, we did blue TPU, and that was for a tire, and that was at 230 degrees. And I think that was too high because there was a lot of stringing and a bit of blobbing. So I brought that down to 220 degrees and that fixed it. And that's given me a really clean surface on that model. And it sticks to the bed. That was amazing. Everything I've heard on the web is that it's very hard for models to stick to the bed, but I've got the bed set at 70 degrees and everything has stuck really well to that bed. And I've been really happy with it, with all the materials that we've used. 
on a regular Bowden setup with flexible filaments, you have to remember that the filament is not only getting pulled down through that Bowden chamber, it's also getting pulled back up every time it does a retract. So most prints involve a retract. That creates a lot of slack and that slack is going to prevent the filament from feeding out of that hot end when you want it to. So that's not optimal. People say it works, but it can't be fantastic on the corners of models um, where it needs to get the pressure where it has to be. Having this set up means that you have the pressure in that hot end where, when it needs to be, where it needs to be, and you'll get much cleaner prints. So guys, my final thoughts on this. It's a very simple mod to adapt. The hot end doesn't change. It stays exactly as is. The only change is you're moving that extruder motor to a different location. You're just moving it from here over to the top and you're making that Bowden tube super short. That's all you're doing. Don't forget to have a look at the description we have below on our video here. That'll give you the links to um, all the parts that I've 3D printed on here. This mod is very straightforward. You've seen me do it, now you can do it yourself. So enjoy printing, catch you next time.